So I got another donation today. You know what I'm saying? Cappy done donated like six bucks and said, here, put that food shortage video to the front of the line. Thank you, my brother. It's something I've been wanting to work on. And any of y'all that want to see some type of content, you want to see me speak on something, do some research, get into something, holler at me. Hit the Streamlabs in the description. Leave you a comment. Tell me what you want to see. I usually ain't got any problem working on damn near anything when it comes down to it. You know what I mean? So thank you very much, Cappy. It's appreciated. Yo, y'all enjoy the show. The number one story in the world right now, you just saw some of it. It's the war in the Ukraine. Now get the latest on the war in Ukraine, entering its second month. And in Eastern Europe, tensions are rising and rising as the Russian invasion on Ukraine carries on. The inferno burning into the night. At least two missiles striking miles from the Lviv city center, shattering the relative calm of Western Ukraine, sending people scrambling for bomb shelters. Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia. For free people refused to live in a world of hopelessness and darkness. We will have a different future, a brighter future, rooted in democracy and principle, hope and light, of decency and dignity, of freedom and possibilities. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. And you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression or persecution. But from annihilation, we're fighting for our right to live, to exist. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. It's war, folks. It got everything. It got planes. Tanks. Reporters in body armor. Shaky cameras. It even comes with a full threat of starvation for individuals because according to our president, we're going to end up with food shortages. With regard to food shortages, yes, we did re re so talk about food shortages. And, uh, and it's going to be real. The, the price of these sanctions is not just imposed upon Russia. It's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. Someone really needs to get this guy a teleprompter. Like, he served under the teleprompter in chief in Obama. Like, how does he not know about this technology? Somebody needs to put something in front of him. This is getting embarrassing at this point. But I'm going to tell you what. Let's get into the actual video, right? Because they're talking about food shortages. And I'll be honest with you, all right? I don't really think that there's going to be food shortages after doing a butt ton of research like a lot a lot a lot of research we stood here and determined that when it comes down to russia what we're being told and what's really happening are two way different things like peter zihan is way off on this one. so First things first, what we did is we stood here and we checked out like where Russia is on the food chain as far as like fertilizer production is concerned, right? And you know what I'm saying? Like they're the number one fertilizer producer in the world and like Belarus is like number four or five, something like that, right? And then we sat here and I looked at where does Russia's, you know what I'm saying, fertilizer go to, right? Well, you know, most of it either goes to Europe or goes to like south america right like 18 percent of it 20 percent one fifth right as it would be depending on how you like your numbers goes to brazil right and literally like brazil just went to the un and said that they don't want to have like food production um commodities and you know i mean add-ons and ingredients like included in the tariffs because like it wouldn't be you know i mean fair to like human beings who have to live and survive in the u.s you know what i'm saying the uh 
the uh, Secretary of Agriculture in the United States, stood here and said that he's just fine with, you know what I'm saying, individuals starving in the rest of the world so that they can defeat Russia. It's a nice elitist point to make when you live in a country where you're pretty much food secure. Like there's no way that the United States is going to actually suffer when it comes down to it. And the only things that we're going to see shortages in is things that we import, like, you know, bananas and fruit and whatever. And these people will be able to pay the upper scale price of what it's going to be, right? Because, you know, they don't care. And we actually learned when, you know, I mean, I stood here and did a bunch of research that like Brazil's still shipping sugar into Russia, right? And Russia has a port on the Black Sea and, you know, I mean, on the bottom of Jordan, even though Ukraine's ports are all closed. <clears throat> and by the way, the EU is still taking oil and natural gas from Russia, right? As they stand here and posture, you know, I mean, and pretend that like they're actually, you know, I mean, doing something and being hard lined with this country. It's not really true in the end of the day. So with that being said, are there going to be food shortages? Maybe, right? Do I think they're going to be as bad as they say they're going to be? No, right? <laughs> Legitimately, like, no, right? They still have ports in the Baltic Sea and they still have ports, you know what I'm saying, in the Black Sea. So, like, it's nothing that we really need to actually be concerned about. And by the way, if you're concerned about China, you know, standing here not exporting fertilizer either, right? Because this is really what the whole food shortage thing was about, right? It's not actually about, like, food itself. I know Ukraine and Russia are standing here and producing a shit ton of wheat, whatever it is. And yeah, that'll raise prices, but the truth of the matter is, it's like the United States subsidizes most of its shit anyway, right? China, when it comes down to it, if you think they're actually, they actually banned exports, you're wrong. They never did. Neither did Russia. It's crazy. If you go look it up, you'll see a whole bunch of stories about that. They're gonna do it. But they didn't. And they're not. That's the truth of the matter. Right, I mean, like, oh, again, like, it's kind of one of those things where either A, these elites really don't understand what they're doing, which is a good possibility, or B, you know, they're psychopaths, which I do believe too as well. But I absolutely believe they, they work on the premise of they understand that every country is nine meals away from anarchy, is what it is. It was first said in the 1920s by, I think, a guy named Alfred Lewis or something like that, John Stewart or something. I don't know. But either way it goes. Oh, by the way, thank you very much, Cappy, for your donation. It's appreciated, my brother. You know what I'm saying? This is something I've been wanting to work on. So, in the meantime, y'all know what it is. Like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comment section. It's Tom Pease with Pinoy News. Later, I'm out.